Well, folks, welcome to Dan Hudson Baseball Field here for today's matchup between your Hazen Union Wildcats and the visiting Randolph Ghosts. I'm James Salvis, and joining me today is Mike Demand Baker. How are you doing today, Mike? Hey, great, James. How are you? Not bad. It's a beautiful day for a game, for sure. Nice morning. Sure is, Mike. And we'll have Lyle Rooney on the mound, and we'll get ready to get underway. As Allen stands in, and he fouls that one away. To the right, first pitch strike by Rooney. Yeah, Rooney's having a really good season this year. He's been solid. Sure is. Pitched really, really well last weekend. He did, for sure. Next pitch on the way by Rooney. That's right down the middle for a strike. Nice pitch by Rooney, 0-2. Yeah, he had a sprained ankle a couple weeks ago, so it's great that he's come back strong after that. That is, it's good to see him pitching well, still even after that. That's low for a ball. One ball, two strikes the count to Allen at the plate. Mike, these Hazen Wildcats rank, I believe, first in the standings. They are right now, they are. They had a really solid, tea, solid season. That's low for a ball, two and two. Rooney now back on the rubber. He'll wind and deliver. That's in there for strike three. Yeah, great start for Rooney there. Yep, first strike out of the day. So looking at the standings today, we have in Division Three Hazen 11 and one, Bellows Falls in second, 10 and three, Strong People's Team in third at eight and one, and then in fourth, Thetford. Um, so four really good teams on top of Division Three. Yeah, and a very, very tough Capital League as well. Oh, absolutely. Rooney from the set, he'll wind and fire. Swing and a miss there by Lewis at the plate. And Lewis in right field today. Yep, the number nine fielder position wise. Rooney now, he'll wind and fire. That's in there for a strike on the corner. Painted it by Rooney. On defense for the Wildcats, we have Montgomery behind the plate, Aisha Goulds at first, uh, Tyson Davison's at second, Andrew Menard at third, Tyler Regard at short. That one's fouled away by Lewis. Uh, in left field, we have Jas Zendik. In center field, we have Jaden Baker. And in right field, we have uh, Dan DeGrosliers. Next pitch is low for a ball. One ball, two strikes. One out for the Hazen defense. Strong defensive team, Mike, for uh, the Wildcats as well. They have, they have played solid D over the course of this season. That's in there for a ball, two and two. Yeah, that's one thing that I think is a uh, very underrated statistic in baseball today is defense. Oh, it definitely saves a lot of runs for sure. Sure does, especially having Rivard, who's tall and can move really, really well at shortstop and yes. cover a lot of ground. Yep, they have been solid this year. That's in there for strike three, so back-to-back -back punch outs to start the game for Rooney. Off to a fast start. Now standing in is Boganis. Big, looks like a really big bat here for uh, the uh, Randolph. It does. He's Boganis is tall. He is. Pitch on the corner for a strike. Looks like he's playing third base today. It does. He looks, he's built like a third baseman. Yes. Do you remember if he played basketball, Mike? Looks I was like just player. trying to think of that, James, and I can't remember. And swing and a miss by Boganis, so 0-2. I was gonna say, he certainly seems like he has the size of <laughs> yes. a basketball player. Rooney now, he'll wind and fire. And that's hit hard on the ground. Ooh, Rivard slides. Fires to Gould at first and a wayward throw. So speak of the devil there, Mike. We were just talking about the good Hazen defense and Rivard will have an E6. Yeah, that was a really tough play though. That was deep in the hole, long throw. It was. Um, really good attempt by Rivard. Yes, excellent attempt by Tyler. 
but yeah. just pulled Asia a bit off the bag there. Yeah, Asia just missing the tag. Yeah, if he had made the tag there, would that have saved the air? That would have. That would have. And I, because I'm not sure about that always. Yeah, and I think that it's, it's. We'll see what the scorers decide. But that the position of that ball in deep short, they could go with an infield hit. Also, we'll see what they come up with. Yeah, I would probably call that a base hit if I was a scorer. But oh, I agree with that. That's fouled away by uh, life. Lifeford. 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 Playing left field today. Yep, number 11, Lifeford. Rooney winds and fires. And that's smoked out towards center field. Baker's got to get on his horse to get this one, and that's down out there. So this should push across one run, Mike, I believe. Get yep, Boganis is going to come around to score, and the Wildcats are down one to nothing early. I've got to say, James, I've seen almost every Hazen game this year. That's probably the hardest hit ball off Rooney the entire year. That was well hit ball. Yeah, I was going to say, I've went back and rewatched some of the old games when I was still at college before I could get here to call, and I, I agree, that is probably the hardest hit ball I've seen off Rooney so far this year. Rooney normally does not give up a lot of loud contact like that. I mean, that was grooved. Now Fordham stands in. Rooney winds and fires. That'll be fouled back, 0-1. So the Hazen defense has to deal with one duck on the pond at second base. Yeah, yep. Tried to make a play here to get out of the inning. Yep. Lyford really drove that ball, too. He hit that ball hard. Oh, that was well hit. It was. I, I don't think uh, Jaden had much of a chance in center field at that one. No, he's was just over his head. Yeah, Jaden's been able to track down most everything out there this year, but that, he has. He, that was hit really hard. That was headed for the Jew Divine Library. So. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, that looked good on the corner, but home plate umpire says it's a ball just missed. One and one now to Fordham. Who I believe it looks like he's playing first base today, Mike. That's hit hard, foul over behind first. That's headed for the Hudson soccer field. Yeah, he looks like he's he's on um, Rooney's pitches right now. He does. He's we'll, fouling him off. We'll see if Rooney goes with an off-speed pitch here. Yeah, I agree. He's another big kid, too. No, he goes, goes with a fastball and strikes him out. All right, folks. I'm going to take a quick second to read our sponsors today. We have Buffalo Mountain Power Sports. 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080, archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back, folks. So we're getting ready to take you to Hazen's at bat. Their leadoff hitter, Tyson Davison, making his way in. Tyson Davison, I believe, is a basketball player, isn't he, Mike? Um, He, he didn't play this year, but he was a captain on our soccer team and he's he plays on the golf team also he's a great athlete he is he's got great speed on the bases if your last name's davison you're probably a pretty good athlete yeah, here yes. at, uh hazen yes cody was a great athlete cody and his younger sister caitlin yep so davison will face stalls on the mound he winds and fires that's low for a ball something you don't see every day mike a southpaw on the mound no no don't see a lot of lefties today. No, really don't. He will wind and fire. Ooh, that's inside. Almost got a piece of uh, Davison there. Davison, a real, real good contact hitter. Doesn't hit for a lot of power, but he's a good hitter and he's fast, good in the field. I think he's a uh, common build you would see for a second baseman. Yeah, and a great, great leadoff hitter. Just a guy you want leading off. It very. So good start, ahead in the count, 3-0 and for Davison. Yep, the Hazen Wildcats got to try and push across some runs here and either tie the game or get back in the lead as they got down one nothing early. And a four-pitch walk drawn by Davison. You know, that's something, you know, sometimes that's the game of baseball, Mike. You just get unlucky. Sometimes you just hang one pitch and it just gets hammered. Yes, yes. As Rivard stands in now for the Wildcats, the big bat with Tyler Rivard. Like you said, a four-sport athlete. Incredible. Soccer, basketball, baseball, golf. Yes, yep. Rivard hit a home run a couple weeks back. 
He did. He hit a shot over it. It was over at Danville. Yeah, their field is deep, too. Yeah, he, he hit that well. Yeah, Danville's out to center. It's like 500, I think. It is. Uh, 480, I think, to center. It's a deep, deep park. That's inside. Davison on the move. He'll slide into second base safely. So that's one thing, Mike, that uh, Spencer Howard was telling me. He, te he teaches these Hazen Wildcats how to steal bases all the time, and it pays off. Yeah, you'll see Hazen really aggressive on the bases. And that's one thing you got you like to see, too. You don't see it every day is being this aggressive on the base yeah. path. Yep. So Stahl's on the way. Stahl's, I'm sorry. That's out uh, inside for a strike, they said, on the corner. One and one to Rivard. Rivard just trying to be patient here, wait for something to hit. Saul's back on the rubber. He'll wind and fire. And that's tapped back to the pitcher. Saul's took a look to third and fired onto the first baseman, uh, Fordham. You know, although Rivar didn't hit that the way he wanted to, it was a fairly successful at bat, um, advancing the runner to third base. Yep, and another good hitter standing in, and James Montgomery, the catcher for these Wildcats, I believe. Uh, did James play basketball this year, Mike? He didn't, he didn't. He plays soccer, though, I believe. James is a, another good athlete. He is. Snap throw over to third, nothing doing. That's something you don't see every day, a pickoff throw to third no, base. No, no, keeping a Davidson speed, keeping an eye on him over there. Oh yeah. Stealing home is also something that is not common, but Tyson could do it. Oh, he's capable of it. He's fast. That's outside for a ball. 1-0 count now to James Montgomery. From Sauls, who's in a bit of trouble early. Sauls now winds and fires. That's outside for a ball. Snap throw to third base and Ooh, that was that close was, there. Yeah, that was fairly close. Was. I think Tyson got a little bit too far off the bag there. Yeah, yep. Montgomery also looking for a pitch here to drive. 2-0 to him. Sauls now winds and delivers. And Montgomery will foul that one back to the screen. Yeah, good swing by Montgomery there. Just topped it a little bit, got it off the end of the bat. I don't think he quite put the barrel to it the way he wanted Not to. Not quite. <laughs> so you see Joe Rivard, the assistant coach, coaching first base, and Spencer Howard at third. Yeah, he's in with a really good coaching staff. Um, they do. And also Opie Upson. Um, yep, the assistant. But very good staff, a lot of baseball knowledge, a lot of experience. It is. Spencer played in... Played in high school, played basketball in high school. Spencer was a good athlete himself. And Montgomery will foul that one back off the catcher. Certainly hope he's all right. That's why you wear pads back there. Yep. Still doesn't feel good, though. I've done it. <laughs> That's why when I got to high school, I moved to second base in the outfield. Well, don't blame you there. A little bit less a chance of me getting beamed if I was in the outfield. Or peppered with a ball. <laughs> yeah. We also had a very good catcher when I was in high school. Well, that helps. You know, good sure catcher does. behind the plate like we have with James. It yeah. really helps. You know, James blocks pretty much everything behind the plate. There's not an awful lot that gets by him. Yeah, he's definitely solid back there. He is. The same as uh, Ethan Shoplin last year. He was a great, great catcher. But he moved into the outfield and when James came back. When James was hurt, Ethan caught. And then once James came back, Ethan moved to the outfield, and he was a great outfielder. He played center last year. Yeah, he really was. Ethan had a great senior year. He did. Ethan was a, a great athlete. I mean, same as most of the Shoplins, his older brother Russell was an incredible athlete. Yes, yeah. yes he was. All right, looks like a full count here. Yep, three and two to Montgomery. Sauls from the rubber, he'll wind and fire. And that's outside. Good eye by Montgomery there to draw a walk. So that'll be Saul's second walk of the inning. So now standing in is Jaden Baker. As Lance Hall would call him in this sport, the butcher, the baker, the home run maker. <laughs> <laughs> we call him the three-point maker in basketball, him and his brother. One thing you know with those bakers, sure can shoot. 
A lot of time in the driveway for sure. 100%. That's in there, first pitch strike. Don't blame Jaden for wanting to take one right there. Yep, well, I'm sure the runners will be looking to go here. I would say or the that runner at first. Yep, I would say Montgomery would probably be in motion here at first base. He's pretty fast too. So. He is. Sauls now he takes a takes a long look in usually before he throws. That's tapped back to the mound. They snap to third base, and that and that's going to be a costly one I think for the pitcher Sauls. That's going to be an E1 throwing to <coughs> third. So this game will be tied now at one game at one round apiece as a uh, ball hit back to the mound. Pitcher overthrew it to third base. And so it'll be an E1. And I think part of that can be attributed to Hayes and speed on the bases. Um, I think so too. You know, I think Davison really got in his head at third base. Thought yeah, he was going to go. And yeah. Davis and Montgomery and Jaden. Um, who hit that all great speed. So I definitely um, yeah. made it tough for um, Randolph there on that play. And Rooney, who's at the plate now, he's also fast, the pitcher. Yes, Rooney is sol a solid all-around player. Yeah, I believe Lyle plays soccer as well. He's a great, um, great pitcher and definitely um, good shortstop. Yep. When he has to play shortstop. Yeah, he's played some short this year when Tyler's pitched and made and some solid plays over occasionally, there. Occasionally, I'm sure, you know, Andrew Menard pitches here and there. Or yeah. A little bit yep. last year. So I think Tyler would play third in that aspect and Lyle would go to short. Lyle and um, Jazz Zendik are both guys that you can play at about any position. Yep, pretty much. So a run's going to score, throw to first base, and they got him. But nonetheless, that'll be an RBI for Lyle Rooney. That will be an RBI. So now Jas Zendik stands in. He's got a runner at third. The Wildcats lead two to one now. And to see, I haven't seen Aaron Hill at a ball game yet this year, and usually he comes to a lot. Yeah, he's been around. He's been around at times. Certainly. That's one thing about Aaron Hill. He sports most days in athletics. He comes to a lot of soccer games as well. Oh, golf is a small fall sport, isn't it? Golf is now. Because I was going to say, it would be kind of hard for Tyler to play both, ba both yeah, baseball and golf, yeah. and I forgot that he plays soccer and golf. Yeah, you've got, um, uh, I hope I don't forget anybody, Tyler, yep. Jaden, Andrew Menard. Andrew Aisha, plays Aisha, golf. Andrew plays golf, Asia, Tyson Davison, those guys are all part of the golf team. And that ball is going to scoot away past the backstop, and uh, Jaden Baker is going to come on in to score. So... I'm not sure if that would be an RBI for Zendik or not. I don't believe it is. I, I know if the bases are loaded and you get walked, it counts as an RBI. Yes. But I don't think that counts as an RBI. No, I don't believe it does. But the run will score, and it's 3-1 to one Hazen. So they've done a good job at getting runs home. Yeah, kind of scratched them out. Nothing really hit hard this inning, but they found a way. Yep. Yeah, Jazz has had some really big hits this year. and Sure has. Goes to Craftsbury, but they don't have a baseball team, so he plays here at Hazen. It's kind of the same at uh, Peoples. That's fouled back to the screen at Peoples. Stowe doesn't have a baseball team, so all the Stowe kids come and play at PA. A lot of good athletes from Stowe, that I, from my understanding, over on that baseball team. Yes, Augie Levin, very good athlete, their catcher. Jackie Lund, who goes to Stowe, very, very good player among others on that People's Academy team. Chandler Fallins be a very good shortstop. Ben Alex in a great pitcher. So. Yeah, definitely some good baseball team over there. Very much so. Two and two count now. That's high for a ball. Good eye by Zendik. He'll watch that one. Full count now. You know, <clears throat> that's going to be a matchup that I'm interested to see how the season goes and where hopefully they're the top two or three seeds so they wouldn't have to play yeah. each other until yep. the championship. That would be nice. So Zendik will draw a walk, and that'll be Saul's first, uh, third walk of the inning. And now, as Lance Hall would call him, Andrew the Mahler Menard stands in. Actually, I came up with the Mahler. He was trying to think of a, <laughs> a, a nickname for Andrew, yeah. a hockey, a good hockey yes. nickname, and I said the Mahler. 
And he's like, I liked that. <laughs> Snap throw over to first base. Zendik will get back. Uh, Lance thought that uh, Menard might have been the first Hazen hockey player. No, it was actually Jaden Perry. Played hockey. Yeah, yeah. He also played soccer. Wines and fires now. That'll be behind Menard at home plate. Zendik will move up. Well, let me tell you, Menard is one tough cookie at the plate. <laughs> he is. He battles up there. He does. But also, he, he's a hockey player, too, so, you know, he used to taking a hit. Tough. <laughs> Fortunately, in golf, it's not really a contact sport. Yeah. I've seen him over the years dirt biking with my son, Jaden. He's taken a couple hits For on sure. the dirt bikes, too. For sure. Tough. That'll toughen you up, let me tell you. Looks like we got a mound visit for Randolph. Maybe a potential pitching change on the way. Nope, they're going to stick with Sauls on the mound. Speaking of which, did Derek Sauls play basketball this year? He did not this year. No, was he a senior? He was. He would have. He graduated. Oh, anyways. okay. Yeah, yeah. He was a senior two years ago. He was, yeah. Or my freshman year of college. Yeah. Yes. So Menard now. Dust himself off. He's looking for something to drive. Yes. Oh, there was a good pitch to hit, but Menard will watch it. Big gap over in right center if you can hit one in that direction. Or left. Big gap in left field, too. Even a base hit would score him. And Menard will pop that one up. Over, the pitcher can't make the play, and that's through. So Menard will get a base hit, and Zendik is going to come around to score. It's going to be 4-1 to one Hazen. I believe that's going to be a base hit. I, I think it will be. And that, What hustle by Zendik going, getting um, in, scoring from second base on that play. Yep. Good and hustle. That'll, so that will be a base hit for Andrew Menard and an RBI. Yeah. Another ball that wasn't hit hard by Hazen, but well placed. Yes, exactly. You know, just kind of poked it off the end of the bat yeah. and it worked out. Yep. As uh, DeGrosliere stands in now. He'll take a big cut and a miss at that one. Dan DeGrosliere is the right fielder, I believe. For the Wildcats. Oh, James, in the beginning of the year, Dan had a lot of big hits, a lot of RBIs um, I believe for it. three or four games. I believe that the name DeGrosley Ayers is very big here at Hazen throughout sports history. Swing and a miss there. I believe I'm saying his last name right. You are. I always yep. shank it. Yep, pretty good. Pretty good. That's one of a pet peeve of mine, Mike. <laughs> I try and get everybody's names right. Well, you're doing great. And that's foul tipped. That's a foul tip. So it will remain at the plate. He's fighting at the plate, own two. Two down. So you know DeGrosley Ayers is looking for one of those big big hits like you said he had many of early in the season. He'll fight that one foul to first base. Joe Rivar tried to pick it. Dan fighting off a couple good pitches there to stay alive. He is battling. Making Saul's work on the mound as most of the Wildcats have. Sauls winds and fires. That's inside. Menard on the move. And he'll get into second base standing, so he'll swipe that. We got a thief out there, Mike. <laughs> Menard with the steal. Great hustle by Menard. It is. And Sauls has had to throw a lot of pitches this inning, which is really tough on a hot day like today. It is, especially like, and I thought it might have thrown the Wildcats off a little bit too, maybe seeing a lefty, something they're not used to. That looked like a pretty good pitch there by yeah, Sauls that too. Must have just missed. Yep. Yeah, everybody make sure to wear your sunscreen today. It is hot out. The breeze is nice, though. Very nice breeze. And that's hit. That'll get down. The shortstop scoops it up. He'll fire to first base on a bang-bang play, and he's yeah. out. Very, so. very good stretch from the first baseman over there. So that'll do it. After one, the Wildcats lead 4-1. to one. Take a second to read our sponsors here. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics. 
and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080, archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back, folks. We're back, folks. As you see, Rooney will remain on the mound for the Wildcats, as he should. He struck out three in the first inning. And this is Stockwell, the DH, up to the plate. Yep, he's hitting instead of the pitcher. I don't like in baseball now, Mike, they have the uh, universal DH in the majors. Not a fan of that? Not really a fan. I liked in the National League the pitchers got to hit. And I also liked in the American League when the pitchers would go to the National League and they got to hit. I liked how seriously Pedro Martinez took hitting. Yeah. Swing and a miss there, 0-2 to Stockwell. What's your feeling on the new pitch comm, how pitchers and catchers communicate? A lot of new technology with that. Uh, I think that was kind of the way baseball was leaning. I haven't really had a fair opinion on it yet. I don't love it. I don't hate it. Yeah. It's well, just kind of okay. There's a hard hit ball down towards right field, and that's going to scoop foul. Yeah, just slicing foul. Oof. Good. Good thing that did, because that had trouble written all over it. Yeah, so they pitch, put pitch comm in, I think, to try to speed up the game a little bit. And I think it, part of it was, too, with issues with teams uh, trying to steal signs and stuff. Yeah, so. you know, the stuff that happened to the Astros and their manager, right, A.J. Right, Hinch. Right. I'm surprised he even got a job in the majors again, to be honest. He's managing the Tigers now. Yeah, definitely a lot of controversy surrounding that. For sure. I was glad when the Red Sox hired Alex Cora, though, their former player. He's Al been a very good manager. He is. He's great. And swing and a miss. So three pitches, three strikes, one out for Lyle Rooney, who is cruising on the mound to his fourth K of the day. For those of you at home that don't know what K is, it's another word for strikeout. They call it a K. Not sure why, to be honest, but I just I always have. Yeah, I don't remember the history of that. As now... Um, Davigan stands in. The uh, lineup card must be a little out of order here because Davigan is hitting now and was, I think Ferris was due up. That's fouled back off Montgomery. Oh, I, think, I think that is Ferris. I think that is Ferris. And oh, it eight. is. My bad. I was reading his number as two instead of eight. I was reading his position. So, yes, Ferris is batting. Sorry. Montgomery hit off the mask there, umpire checking to make sure he's all right. I hope he is, and James is a tough kid. Said nope. he rides dirt bikes a lot too, so. Yes. <laughs> Rooney now back on the rubber, he'll wind and fire. That's in there, nice curveball there, it looked uh, like anyways. That was a beauty. Looked like a curveball at least. Yeah, nice, I started high and dropped. Yes. Nice 12-6 curveball right there. Those of you who don't know what that means, it means it drops from 12 to 6 on a clock. That's hit hard. That might get through. And nice dive there by Revard, but that'll get through. That'll be a base hit for Ferris. That was another hard hit ball, Mike. That was. That was hit hard. Good effort by Revard there at short. Yeah, I don't. As much as I hate to say it, Mike, I don't think Revard was going to be able to get to that one. As no. good as his range is, that was just hit hard right in the yeah. perfect spot up the middle. Yeah, nothing he could do about that. Looks like we have a pinch runner here, courtesy runner. Yep, for the catcher. Um, oh, by the way, Mike, PA had a game today, senior night. Where, where are they playing today, do you know? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Pretty good team, I think. I can't remember. My guess is PA and Hazen are keeping track of what each other are doing, being both near the top of the D3 standings. I would say probably. I know from some player, I know some of my friends that still play at PA, they've been keeping track of yes, yep. what's been going on. Same with these guys here. Yep. Spencer, obviously. Good pitch there by Rooney. Strike right down the middle. Rooney throws hard on the mound, too. He does. Just gorgeous day for baseball. Oh, it's great. Couldn't be better. Snap throw back to first by Rooney. Yep. A little lower, and he might have picked him off. Good play by Gould. Yeah, Aisha, a good athlete. Nice grab there at first base. You know, that's one thing you do see a lot of, though, lefty first baseman. Yes, yep. It's good to see because they're closer to the infield. Ferris on the run. 
a little wayward throw there by Montgomery. Looked like. But I good. think uh, Hazen didn't get to the bag quite quick enough. Yeah, I think that was the issue exactly. I think Tyson and uh, Tyler just had a little bit of a miscommunication there in the field of who was going to cover the bag. I would agree with that. The base came off. Base came out of the ground over there, Mike. All right, looks like uh, Davison getting it together in there. Yep. Tyson, I believe, is cousin to Cody Davison, correct? He is. He is. Very, that whole family, like I said, good athletes. Very athletic family. And like I said, uh, his cousin Caitlin is a yeah. very good athlete here. Cody's younger sister, very good soccer and basketball player. I think she plays soccer. She does. And I'll tell you, when I coached All-Stars when the kids were younger, she would played All-Star baseball, and she did great. Oh, I believe it. That's hit hard, foul. Another one. Dan Hudson soccer field over there getting peppered today. <laughs> so Rooney, as I like to say, back on the slab. Watch a lot of uh, Red Sox games, so I hear Dennis Eckersley commentate a lot. And I love the way he <laughs> commentates. He's great. And that's a strike three on the corner, so that'll be a back another backwards K for Rooney watching. Tell you, I miss Jerry Remy a lot this year, though. He's, I do, too. He was a hoot. He was great. He was great listening to him growing up over the years, him and Don Orsillo and now oh, Dave O'Brien. Yeah. I like Dave O'Brien a lot, too. Yeah. yeah. A lot of good laughs with Orsillo and Remy, though. For oh, sure. Man. Very... That's outside for a ball. Snap throw down by Montgomery. Good job to keep him honest down there at second base. Great idea there. Yeah, Montgomery got a guy earlier this year at second on one of those snap throws, so he's capable of doing it. Certainly is, and I, I don't mind him being aggressive. So now Rooney. He'll step off and throw back to second. Nothing doing. So Revert will just eat that one. So back on the rubber now. Lyle Rooney. He'll wind and fire. Oof, that looked real good. Yeah, a little just low, missing. Though. Mike, is Lyle a senior? Lyle's a junior. Junior, thank God. Get him for another year. We'll get most of this baseball team back next year, except for Asia at first base. And Tyson. Yeah, and Tyson. Tyson. But I think pretty much everybody else will be back. Because Jaden will be back. Dan will be back. Jazz, I would assume, would be back. Oh, Jazz, he's actually a senior also. Is he? So Jazz and uh, Tyson and Asia yeah. will be gone. Yeah, I'm trying to remember if Brandon Crawford, um, a good pitch hitter for Hazen off the bench. I can't remember if he's a senior or not. Pretty sure he is. Doesn't look like Brandon's in the lineup today, though. Played last season, played a little first base, yep. got some outfield. Yep. And he's played this year, too. He's actually got a couple big pitch hits over the course of the season. Yep. I believe it. He could hit the ball hard. I remember when he used to go to PA when he was younger. Yeah, he, he was a good hitter, or is a good hitter. Yeah. Rooney winds and fires. Swung on and missed, but held on by Montgomery behind the plate. So I believe that'll be five strikeouts on the day for Lyle Rooney. Maybe even six. I think six, actually. So I'm going to take a second to read our sponsors here. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics. And DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080, archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back, folks. So we're back, folks, and it uh, looks like they're going to remain with, Sa remain, uh, with Sauls on the mound as uh, Isha Gould stands in. He's one of those, as some people would call uh, Mike, one of those weird lefties who throws left and bats right. <laughs> it's not common to see guys that throw right and bat left. No, no, it at, isn't. At, in baseball, but it, it is kind of uncommon to see a lefty that bats right. That's fouled back by Gould. Occasionally you will see a left-handed switch hitter. You will, yep. A guy that throws left and bats switch. You don't see, you know what's coming to uh, fruition a lot now, Mike, is uh, switch pitchers. You know, that happens occasionally, yeah. You see it a lot in the major leagues now. Well, not a lot, but. 
And that is tough. It's hard enough to throw strikes with your dominant hand. To me, that's got to be so... Could you imagine how hard that's got to be as a batter? You step in there as a righty, he starts throwing right-handed. Then yeah. he switches to his left hand mid-at bat. <laughs> it's like, what? And have you seen the gloves on those things, too? They're huge. I have not. They have a web on both sides. Oh, wow. There's ten finger holes in there. Wow. I've seen them. They're actually pretty neat. Three and one now to Gould. They're pretty neat, Mike. They have a web on both sides. So you go like this, and you take it off your left hand, and you can switch and put it on your right hand or vice versa. <laughs> and they have webs on both sides. Wow, that's amazing. It is. And Gould is gonna hit that one hard foul. Gould has a, had a solid year, he's hit very well. He has, he had an excellent season in basketball. He did, gave good energy off the bench. He did, played great at the odd. He sure did. That's hit hard, speaking of Gould, right up the middle, hard hit. Nice knock there for Asia Gould. First hard hit of the day for the Wildcats, really. Was, he hit that well. As uh, a lot of pro commentators would say, he hit that on the screws. <laughs> That's why I love baseball. There's so many great terms you can use as a commentator. <laughs> there sure is. I mean, there is in basketball too, but it's different. Well, baseball has such great history. It does. As does basketball, but yeah, football, but. That's why baseball is my favorite sport, personally. Oh, bunted back here behind home plate. Not often you see a bunt fly like that. No, no. Nope. That flew way over the fence and back here to the parking yeah. lot. Davidson is a good bunter. He's had a couple good ones throughout the year. He is. If you're fast and you can lay one down, it works out pretty well. I've got a chance to see some of Coach Howard's practices over the year, and he definitely spent some time on bunting. A lot of time on those fundamentals. He does, and that's a great thing that is lost in baseball today. And I, I'm glad to see Spencer, who is a very old-fashioned coach, you know, puts on a lot of hit and runs. These guys run a lot. He bunts a lot. Yes. Speaking of which, there goes Gould. And he thought he should have got down there. Maybe that was a little too close for comfort yeah. there at second base. Yeah, kind of surprised he didn't slide on that. Yeah. But I was telling Spencer before the game, I said, I like this field, but I didn't like sliding here. Cut your legs up. Breeds toughness, though. <laughs> I like these new Hazen jerseys. It's good that they finally got some uh, newer jerseys. Uh, they're looking good. Their old ones were a little, uh, little they looked like a t-shirt, basically, with yeah. said Hazen on the front. Yeah, these are looking good. They are. PA needs base new baseball jerseys in the worst way. That's hit hard down the right field line. Dav Davison fighting at the plate. I wouldn't be surprised if Peoples has those new uniforms soon with the success their baseball pro pro program has had. Yeah, you know, their soccer team is very good as well. Angie Ferracci, I, I love Angie. She's a phenomenal coach. I can't find enough good words to say about her. Phenomenal. And swing and a miss. So first strikeout of the day for Sauls on the mound. You know, and that's one thing that's not common today, Mike, and I think that Angie's kind of been a trailblazer for that. You know, a female coach being the coach of a male a male team or a boys team. Yeah, and our varsity boys team actually has... Um, a, a woman coach now, yeah, yes. Yeah, one of the teachers in the school, very well liked. And I heard she's a very good coach, too. She is. That's in there for a ball. A little high there, but, you know, a little bit smaller strike zone for Tyler Revard because he's a little taller. About 6'3", six, 6'4", six, I'd say. He has grown area. a lot. Sure has. That looked good on the corner in there for a strike, one and one. Because I know uh, Revard, I remember because I called games his freshman year, my senior year for basketball, and he uh, he was a little shorter then. Yeah. Now, maybe scraping six foot, but. He's definitely shot up. He has. I think Jaden's gotten a little taller, too. Yeah, he has, yep. And I remember Isaiah used to be kind of short, too, and then he spurted. Yeah, it was good for his bit. last couple of years. That helped a lot. It was, but Isaiah was strong, too. He was not afraid to go inside, I can tell you that. No, no, he, he liked to drive. Saul's now winds and fires. That's outside for a, a ball. Two and one. Two and two, I'm sorry. Wind's kind of blowing in today here, James. It is. Feels good, though. It nice is. breeze. 
as Lance would call it, that Hall Mountain Vortex <laughs> over in Greensboro. Ooh, that looked good too. Thought that caught a piece of the corner. Yeah. Tight strike zone today for the home plate umpire. But you'll have that sometimes. As long as there's consistency. Yep. And that'll be high for a pass ball. And Revard, nice heads up base run in yes. there to move into second base. I'm surprised there wasn't a throw down. They probably would have got him. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know if the catcher was uh, I don't didn't know see him or worried about the runner coming home if he threw down to second. I'm not sure what happened there. Very true. Montgomery stands in now. Oof, big cut at that big one. Big cut by Montgomery. He was swinging for uh, the electric department on that one down there past that center field hill. I've very seldom seen a ball hit way out there here. It's very deep field. Yeah, it really is deep out there. It's kind of like at PA, like I said, when there's no fence there. It's very yeah. deep, unless you hit one to left and it goes in the track, but if you hit it to center or right, there's that big hill out in center field at PA. That's yeah. in there for a ball. Montgomery walked his first time at bat. Have you seen any hit on the track over there? Yep, I've seen a few, actually. It's not often, but it does happen occasionally. It's, it's deep out there. We, we measured it, actually, Mike, one day, me and some of my friends. We took a, one of the oh. meters or whatever yeah. and yep. went out there, and it's about from home plate to the fence at PA at the track. It's about 335. Yeah, that's a shot. It is. Or it's, yeah, it's around 330 or so. So Montgomery will draw a second walk of the day. As now Jaden Baker, what did Jaden do his first time up, Mike? Jaden reached on an error his first time up. Yep, I remember that. So the skipper, as they would say in baseball, on his way to the mound. That's all for Sauls. I have to see who's pitching. We'll be right back after the pitching change. Actually, I can read our sponsors real quick. A little bit of the break in the action. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080, archived at www.hctv.us. Be right back after the pitching change. So we're back, folks. It looks like I believe number 15 is going to be on the mound for the Randolph Ghosts. And that actually looks like it was Stockwell who was DHing before. So yeah, it's going to be Stockwell on the hill now. That's a pass ball. Gould will slide in safe. So 5-1 Hazen. Yep, good hustle by Gould. So that'll be an earned run for Stockwell. <laughs> well, actually, no, it won't because. Uh, Sauls was responsible for the runner at third base. Nice turnout today here at Hazen. Yeah. Always good to see, you know, that's one thing that I like about Peoples and uh, Hazen Mike is that there's always a big fan base, no matter what sport it is, whether they got kids playing or not, they show up. Yeah, yep. Yep. Very fortunate for um, in this community with a lot of fans here. It is. That's why even as an alumni, I still try and get to PA basketball games. I yeah. try to come to some Hazen games. Oh, and Baker will fly that one sky high out to center field. And he'll catch it, so. Revard's going to tag and come home, so that'll be a sack fly and an RBI for Jaden Baker. I believe that'll be a sacrifice fly. It will be, yep. Out there to center field. Sacrifice fly, folks. If you <laughs> hit a ball, center fielder catches it, runs, scores. And sometimes if runner moves up, it's called a sacrifice. Jaden not quite getting all of it, but enough to get the run home. No, if he had got a piece of that, that might have been a mile out there. Another one out to center field. And that'll do it for the inning. But that was hit pretty, pretty well. Another well hit ball out there. Lyle Rooney. We'll be right back, folks. So we're back, folks, here at the Hudson Baseball Diamond. 
Named after Dan Hudson, a great here in the Hazen community. I believe he was a coach for a long time. He was coach, I think vice principal. He is. He's done everything here. He's all about Hazen sports. He is. We actually see him at a lot of games, soccer and baseball games. and. Yep. Spends a lot of time, I think, in Florida now in the winter time on the golf course. And I don't blame you him. Can't blame that. <laughs> nope. I mean, that's tough for like you know us Vermonters that play golf. We can only play at a select time <laughs> of the year. It's like a few months out of the year. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we have winter eight months out of the year. So. <laughs> <laughs> so Andrew the Mahler Menard is going to be on the bump now for the Wildcats. Rooney's going to go to third base. Actually, they're going to leave Revard at short. I'm surprised not to see Rooney move to short and Revard to third. But makes sense. Yeah. I'm fine with either. First pitch from Menard. Swing and a miss. And this is Allen, their shortstop. Yep. It is. Yep, Allen, their shortstop. That's in there for a strike. Nice pitch there by Menard. And drop third strike, and Montgomery will fire down to first to complete the strikeout. So first strikeout of the day for Andrew Menard. And Menard, if I can remember correctly, um, his last game against Oxbow, I think he pitched four no-hit innings. So Pitched very well. He has definitely found a groove lately. One of three pitchers on this Wildcat team, Rooney, uh, Rivard, and Menard. I don't know if anybody else pitches, actually. Yeah, um, Baker pitched earlier this year. Jaden pitched? And, uh, Jaden's oh, nice. pitched, and um, um, also Zendik has pitched. So, so, so Spencer yeah. Howard has some options. Yes. And, and like I was just saying, you know, it's probably smart to see, uh, you know, Howard rest Rooney a little bit here, especially with a big game coming up against Thetford. You're going to yes. want him for that. Yeah. And as you mentioned, Hazen goes to Thetford next week in a big D3 matchup and finishes their season with Linden, who's one of the top two teams in Division Two, a very yes, good team. Yes, very, so very good team. Very. Um, they have a nice field up there at Linden Institute, They do, too. they do. Beautiful field. So very um, challenging week next week for the Wildcats. Yes, for sure. Ooh, nice pitch there by Menard. Thought it caught the corner. Yeah, it looked good. Sure did. Nice stop by Montgomery. It's really too bad. I the other day, I believe it was Thursday, Hazen was supposed to go to Harwood to play, and that game was canceled, and I don't think they're going to be able to make it up. So it's too No, bad. well, there was a game supposed to be here last week, too, that got rained out. Because I remember I was going to call that one, and that one got rained out. Well, I think they still played it, but I think it was too, oh, no, they, too rainy. For, yeah, yeah, they still for, played the game, but it got we didn't stream or commentate. Because of our equipment, obviously, can't get wet. Yeah, that was a nasty rainy day. Good choice to not broadcast that game. Very good choice. Ooh, good pitch by Menard, but it'll be a walk. So no worries for Menard on the mound. Got to settle back in. And the third baseman, Bogantis up. Yep, Bogantis. Yeah, Bogandis in. But yeah, certainly interested to see how the Wildcats fare next week in two tough games on their schedule yes. down the yep. year. Peoples had their senior day today, which is kind of surprising. They're only eight and one on the year, so I figured play more games. They must have. But a, maybe they got a must slew have away of road games, games next week. Yeah. And swing and a miss. So good pitch there by Menard, and he's ahead in the count, zero and two. This is a time of year to check the VPA website almost every day to see the changing and, and yes. uh, positions for teams. It is, so for those of you folks watching, uh, that is vpaonline.org. You look up, or VPA, just look up VPA rankings, then you'll click on the link and it'll bring you right there, and then you can pick all the divisions for, it's the same for any sport, soccer, basketball, baseball, softball, hockey, whatever, tennis, lacrosse, whatever sport you want to watch, golf. Yeah, well, always very interesting to see that, especially as you get closer to playoff time. Exactly. I definitely keep uh, my eye on it during basketball season for sure. 
as like I said, PA and Hazen moved back into the Capital League this year, which is good. It's, you know, tough, tough basketball league. Yeah, very good for them. One of the best in the state, actually. Hi, Montgomery throws uh, down to second. Uh, and tagged by Davison, and he's out. Nice yeah. job by Davison to apply the tag. I wasn't sure if he got him there. But. Yeah, good throw by Montgomery and Davison with a great tag. Really, really nice throw there. Nice day to golf today if you're getting out. Would be a right nice now. day. Would be a nice. Right now. Oof. And a, another back to back walks there by Menard. But luckily they got the runner at first, so he didn't have much to worry about. Two down for the Wildcats as Menard got his first batter to strike out. Then he walked the next two. This is Lyford who had that rocket of a double in his first at bat that scored the only run of the day for the Rand for Randolph. Uh, he hit that really well. He did. Got every stitch of that baseball. Ooh. Just missing by Menard. Just Pitch missing. right down the middle. Yeah, Mike, I'm sure that's one thing I'll come to understand. The umping is a lot harder than uh, yeah. people make it out to be. I got to ump some Little League games this summer, Mike. So. Yeah, I do some of those games also, and I feel like that's a good thing for me to do because it, it kind of makes you know how hard it is to do. It is, and I mean, it's just Little League too, so that's completely different than high school varsity baseball. But Does Hazen have a JV baseball team, Mike? They don't. They don't. Nope. Not a lot, you know, it's actually not common in D3 for a lot of teams to have a JV team. Because every year I was in high school, we didn't have a JV baseball team. We had just varsity. A actually, my freshman year, we had a JV team. But everybody was a swing player. Well, one of the things that, good pitch by Menard for the strikeout. So a pair of shoes there at the plate for Menard, as Eckersley would say. <laughs> I'll take a second to read our sponsors, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You are watching HCTV Channel 1080, archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back, folks. So Zendik on his way in now for the Hazen Wildcats. Yeah, true. He gets yeah, one of the fans just mentioned, folks, a very big Randolph team. You don't see it often in baseball. Guys this size normally have a good mix of smaller guys, taller guys. So Stockwell is going to remain on the mound. He'll wind and fire. That's hit hard and high, twisting out towards right field yeah, by that Zendik. Could be, could be trouble. And it does. It's down. So Zendik on his way into second base. So he'll pick up the double. Nice hit there by Zendik. Hit a high twist and fly ball to right field. And it got down. So now the pitcher, Andrew the Mahler Menard, stands in. What did Menard do in his first at-bat? He drove in a run, didn't Menard he? Menard had an infield hit that drove in a run, yes. Yep. He did. He's looking for one to drive because he can hit the ball hard. Good pitch there for a strike by Stockwell. You know, I don't blame him for taking one. It's very common in baseball you take the first pitch. Very common. I think Menard was thinking take all the way on that one. You see it kind of crowds the plate a little too, so certainly not scared. And there's another base hit into right field. And I thought Howard was going to send Zendik at first, but probably a good idea to hold him up there at third base. But nonetheless, Menard will pick up a second hit of the day with a double. He's having himself a great game. Certainly in contention for my James Alvis Player of the Game Award. And Howard, you know, I think he didn't send Zendik with nobody out. No sense enforcing it at that point. So there is a courtesy runner at second base for the pitcher Andrew Menard. Fent Meyer is going to run. So what a courtesy runner is, is you don't want normally, you know, you don't want your pitcher to get hurt running the bases or you don't want him to exuberate too much energy running the bases. So you're going to have a courtesy runner. Same, you see it with your catcher a lot. You want to see your catcher get hurt and because they already have to do enough behind the plate. Same with the pitcher. 
So a lot of times you'll see a courtesy run right yeah. there. Smart, that. Yeah, smart call by the Hayes and coaching staff, especially on a warm day like today. Exactly. And Fenton Meyer's fast too. So. Fenton does have wheels. See, he's playing with the pitcher now. Oh, and DeGrosier, oh, hard hit ball down yes. the right field line. Yeah. Just hooked foul. Just hooked foul. I thought DeGrosier's was going to have a double right there. I'm telling you, I'm doing my best to say his name right. So, if <laughs> I think you're doing fine. Yep. The De the DeGrosliers parents are watching. DeGrosliers, yes. DeGrosliers. Yep, his parents are watching. I'm sorry if I'm saying his last name wrong. Suppose I get that from my grandmother because she <laughs> says it way wrong. <laughs> So one ball and one strike to the Grosliers now. Stockwell winds and delivers. That's high for a ball, two and one. You know, you'd be that that's one thing, Mike, and, and I mean same thing can happen, you know, anything can happen in playoffs for any sport, but baseball it's so different that like you see teams like Randolph that are kinda towards the bottom of the pack in terms of the standings win sometimes a first round playoff game. Oh it's you know, it's so pitching is so huge, and you know, you get a hot pitcher, and even if it's not a highly seeded team, they can. Or say you push across just sometimes even two runs. Yeah. Yep. Win you a game, like you said, if you got a hot pitcher who just throws well that particular day. So two and two now. Stockwell winds and fires. The Grosliers files fouls that one back to the fence. Yep. Another great battle by Dan. He. Battled his first time at bat also. He did. I think he's looking to have another big RBI day right here. Yeah, got two ducks on the pond for him. Sure does. Runners at second and third. Good eye there by DeGrosliers yeah. to watch it for a ball. Hey, we take a walk and load the bases for Asia, who had a hard hit, single his first at bat. Gould really hit the ball hard his last at bat. He did. Asia having a good senior year. He is. Good in basketball, good in baseball. I think he plays soccer too. Um, not, he didn't play this year, but, but he usually he did. He was pass. a pretty good soccer player. So Gould stands in now with, as Dennis Eckersley would say, the bases are drunk, which means they're full of Hazen Wildcats. So Stockwell. He's got the sign he wants now. He'll wind and fire. In there for a strike. And as James mentioned, um, Gould had a solid hit to center field the last time at bat. Yes, hit it hard. This might be the most fans I've seen at a Hazen game so far, Mike. Uh, they've been really drawing well this year. I believe it. It's good to see Hazen's baseball program back it up is. at the top. It is. After struggling for some years when I was in high school. Yeah, yep. They are a solid team and very well supported by the community. They are well coached, well supported, as are most Hazen athletics. Like I said, that's one thing I love about, you know, I, I'm assuming it is at most schools, but definitely at Hazen and PA, the, the community draw is great. Yeah, you know, when we won the finals in basketball this year, got back really late on a Sunday night, but we were people lining the streets, yelling, honking, honking horns. And oh yes. It was it was great, great community for sports. That's how it was, I remember it was a Saturday when PA won their soccer championship, not this past year, but the year before. My freshman year of college, 2-2 two -two count. They came back and they had a parade in Morrisville, you know, to finally, because we got our first soccer championship oh, yeah. since 2011. Yep. And we've always been a very good soccer team. It's just been us and Stowe usually up at the top. But Hazen, Last couple of years has had a pretty good soccer team. Yeah, they've done well. They did. They we beat them in the quarters my senior year. Had a good team that year. Good eye Ooh. by Gould. Yeah, very good eye. Hard to lay off those pitches at eye level. It is, because sometimes you can just kind of tomahawk them for a hit out into the outfield. Yes. There's that wind. Yeah, feels good today. Sure does. Hope you guys are wearing your sunscreen. 
There's another hit, and that's through for a base hit. One run's gonna come across to score, and two runs are gonna come in to score, so Fenton Meyer and Jess Zendik both come in to score. Aisha Gruel drives in two on his second knock of the day. So he could be another player in contention for his for the James Salvis yeah. Player of the Game Award. He's drove in two runs and has two hits. Yeah, second hit for Gould. Menard certainly won as well. He has two hits and an RBI. Yeah. See how he finishes on the mound. And Tyson Davison up, who's walked and struck out. Yep. So he's 0 for 2 on the day. Or 0 for 1. The walk doesn't count as an at-bat. So he's 0 for 1 on the day. Yes, yep. Out. So Stockwell now, back on the mound. He winds and fires. In there for a strike. Good job by Dave uh, Davison. He just taking the first one there, you know, just watching it. Stockwell winds and delivers. Oof, ball, good pitch there. Looked yeah, like a curveball. The old Uncle Charlie. <laughs> One ball, one strike, no outs for the Wildcats. Ooh, big swing there by Davison. Looks Wait like he took a little off that pitch. Yeah, he did. Might have been a change up there. Threw, threw him off a little bit at the plate. I think Davison was expecting a fastball. That's why the change up is such a dangerous pitch. As you throw it like a fastball, same arm motion, it's just not as fast. Oh, Davison skies that one out towards left field. Left fielder on the run. Oh, he drops it. So that's going to be an E7 out there in left field. Uh, well hit by Davison. It did look like the left fielder had a good beat on that. So he's going to reach on an error. The mound visit now as Revard prepares to stand in. I'll read our sponsors real quick. <sighs> Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You're watching HCTV Channel 1080, www.hctv.us. Uh, it's where it's archived. So quick mound visit but it's over. So Revard, the big bat of the Hazen Wildcats is stand in. Like I said, Revard hit, a, Revard hit an over the fence home run at Danville a few weeks back. He did, he did. Today's work walked on, or uh, reached on a fielder's choice and walked. Yeah, but I'm sure he'd like to get a hit here and drive in some runs. Oh, I'm sure he's really hoping for a good pitch that he can drive. He, he is, because those trees out there, Revard can certainly reach them. That one's over his head for a ball, 0-1, or 1-0 to Revard. Now Stockwell back on the rubber. He's in a bit of a jam on the mound. Ooh, Revard kind of did a half check swing there, but he went. Yeah, another one of those high pitches. It's hard to lay off. It is. One ball, one strike to Revard now. Stockwell kicks and fires. That's outside for a ball. Two and one. Eight to one lead for the Hazen Wildcats here in the third inning. Bottom of the third. And Revard's gonna foul that one back to the hill. Mike, does, uh, does the gym in here have a name? Like, is it named after somebody? It isn't, nope, nope. No, I think a lot of people probably consider it the Dave Morse Gymnasium, though, if I had to hazard a guess. 
for the legendary Dave Morse and everything he did for not only just basketball, but his and sports in general. Yeah, he, he was so supportive of kids in the community here. He was. Revard strikes out. He was a sports writer, wasn't he? He was, but he was a more, more than a sports writer. He was a fan. He was, I know it was basketball. A friend. He was a friend. He was a mentor. He, was, he did everything he could for these kids and coaches. That's why Dave Morse just so was so, so big in this community. And we miss him every day. We sure do. Swing and a miss by Montgomery. You know, there were several times when my, when my kids playing Little League, did we'd bring them to All-Star games. I'd pick them up and bring them. And the kids loved them. I remember one loss. I think it was against Lindenville. We got creamed. And Dave is like, you know, I'm bringing these guys out for ice cream. Brought the kids out for ice cream. Put yep. a smile back on their face. Yep. That's just who Dave Morris was. Didn't have a bad bone in his body. Oh, that's rocketed to left field by Montgomery. Oh, the left fielder will put that one away, though. Whew. That was a frozen rope by He hit that Montgomery. well. Hit that hard. What a nice catch by the left fielder. It is. And uh, kind of surprised Hazen wasn't able to tag up and go on that. I think. Uh, yeah, I think they went a little, a little too early. Yeah. But now, Mike, uh, the big bat of... Uh, Jaden Baker stands in. Does Jaden hit any home runs in high school? He hit one out at Danville last year over the hedges there. Yeah, I and believe I, that. I think he had one inside of the park one. I believe it. Hits hard. Number 12, a very common number by the, the Bakers. Yeah. Isaiah that, wore it before him. That was mine in high school, 12. That's probably why they wear it, Mike. Many years ago. If I had to hazard a guess, Mike, they'd probably many, wear many. it because of you. Many, many years ago. <laughs> You're not that old, Mike. But, yeah, 12, like I said, very common number for them. Isaiah, I believe, wore one his freshman year in basketball. He did, he did. And I think as a junior, he switched to 12 when that number Because he wore available. one his freshman and his sophomore year. Yeah. Because Carter Hill wore 12, I think, his sophomore year. Yeah, he wore 12 his sophomore year on varsity. And then he switched to 21, and Isaiah took 12. Did Jaden stick to four in basketball this year, or did he go to 12? I believe he stuck with four. Carter, 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 took, Carter 12. took 12 after Isaiah graduated, but yep. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go back to 12 this year For, as a senior. Yep. Little high there for a ball, three and one. Yeah, I was gonna say because, or maybe Jaden will stick to four. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Another notable number four for Hazen basketball that I remember is Adam Whitney wore number four. Oh, you have great memories of that. It was very good. I was young too, so I was real little when he was here. And a walk for Jaden Baker. Yeah, Baker who had previously um, walk, uh, reached on an air and hit a sacrifice fly to seven. Oh, so center be, now walks. That'll be Baker's second RBI of the day. His bases were loaded and he walked. Good call, center. James. And Rooney also hit it hard to center his last at bat, but another nice catch was made by their center fielder. As some people would say, a can of corn out there. Ooh, strike on the corner. Rooney didn't like it. Uh, Rooney is a baseball guy through and through. He sure is. Great knowledge of the game. Has he worked does. hard at it over the years. Sure has. I would not be surprised to see him go play college ball somewhere. Yeah, he is capable. Certainly. Looks like the wind's blowing that. Foul. Yeah, just out of play. Yeah, I was going to say, you can't catch it after the second white line, right? Right, right. Good hustle over there by the right fielder. Diz thought he had a beat on it there for a second, but he the did. wind just kept blowing it. Yeah, we've seen several balls hit in that direction, and the wind blow them sure out of have. play. You oh. see, uh, I think a lot of people could call this, you know, not only the Dan Hudson Field, but the Tristan Southworth Baseball Diamond. I yeah. believe that's what the Little League fields are named after. Yes, yep. Tristan, who, for those of you who don't know, great, just great kid, great guy. I shouldn't say kid, he was a lot older than me, but. Yep. Great guy, he big in the Hazen community, three-sport athlete. Great, great basketball player, great pitcher in baseball. Helped you guys to a couple championships in basketball. At least one, I think. 
just a great person, great Was. person, and gave it all for our country. Sure did. And there's another hard hit ball by Rooney. Uh, that one out towards left field, and the left fielder will drop that one. So two, three runs come in. I believe that's going to be an E7. Maybe a base hit. What would you score that one, Mike? I, I, I'm the hometown guy, though. I, 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 Thank you. I'd score it as a double, being the hometown guy. But we'll we'll see what the official scores Say. call it. You know, no, it wasn't easy. He had to, the left fielder had to cover some ground, he wind did. blowing. So that could be a reason for a base hit. Yeah, so, we'll, we'll see what they go with. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you, Mike. I'll say a three RBI double for Rooney. Is it's eleven to one, so that might be the run rule if they can hang on here, Mike. Normally, I believe it's ten runs before the fifth. Or yeah. By the fifth. Yep. Two outs though for the Randolph Ghosts. As Jass Zendik stands in. Yep. Jass has been on twice today with a walk, and he blooped a double out to right field. It's inside for a ball, 2-0. Oh. Another one of those Stockwell. balls that he got hit in the air, made it a tough play for the right fielder. He did. The wind knocked it down for him for a hit. That's high for a ball. 3-0 and oh now to Zendik. Menard on deck. We will see if he has a green light on 3-0 or not. I, w If I was a coach, I wouldn't have him swing unless it's real good. It has to be right down the middle. And ball four, so Zendik will draw a walk. He'll be on for the third time today. So his on-base percentage is 1,000 today. Can't do better than that, James. She certainly can't. Andrew Menard, who's had, a, as Lance Hall would say, a whale of a game so far. He's drove... Drove in a run on two hits. Throwing the ball well in the one inning we saw. Oof, inside at Menard. You know, it seems like Menard gets thrown at an awful lot. <laughs> Some agility there from Menard to get out of the way. It is, like I said, I'm sure that comes from being a hockey player. Got to be quick on your feet. You know, Mike, in, in my opinion, I think hockey's the hardest sport to play. Yeah, I, I really I, do. I haven't played enough to make an opinion on. I mean, I haven't either, but I ha I've had a lot of friends that played hockey. And I, and why I say that is because, think about it, you've got to be able to ice skate, first of all. You've got to be able to not only ice skate, skate well. You've got to be able to stop on a dime on the skate, slide, turn, skate fast, skate forward, skate backwards. On top of that, be able to take a hit, be able to control the puck, be able to shoot while you're moving. And a ground out, so... So that'll do it, I think, for the inning. Take one more read of our sponsors here. Uh, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. You are watching HCTV Channel 1080. Archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back. So, we're back, folks. I should mention it is 12 to 1 instead of 11 to 1. Took the scorers a minute there to put the uh, run on the board. Or whoever's doing the scoreboard. Do you, do you know where they run the scoreboard from here, Mike? Um, we can't see it, but I believe it's over behind the dugout. Or on the other side of the dugout, yeah. maybe? Yeah, yeah. So... Top of the fourth now, 12-1 lead for the Hazen Wildcats. Andrew Menard is going to stay on the bump. This is Fordham, the first baseman. Yep, Fordham, big tall kid. Menard kicks and delivers. That's low for a ball, look good though. Menard now winds and delivers. Hey, you're on, you're on. That's fouled off over behind first base. You see a nice outdoor batting cage here too, Mike. Yes, it's, you know, it's really good. Guys spend a lot of time in it at practice. Which is a good thing. It is. 
That's hit down the right field line. I think that one's going to scoot out of play. Yep. Good contact by Fordham. Looking to straighten one out. Yeah, he's battling. Battling, making Menard work at the plate. As Menard now is going to wind and deliver. That's hit hard. Rivard scoops it up. And that's on to Gould at first base. Nice stretch there by Gould, it too. Was. Nice to play. It was. Good throw by Rivard. Gould's play at first base. You could see his play improve over the years as he's got more experience there. Really, Certainly can. Really solid first baseman. Because, I mean, there's only two positions he can play. First base and the outfield as a lefty. Actually, you can pitch two, so three. And he did pitch one inning the last game, first time pitching this year against Oxbow. Yep. Heads up as Stockwell stands in now. Who was the DH, now he's pitching. So really just nice campus here at Hazen Union. Yeah, very fortunate here. It is. I consider, you know, at PA, I consider, you know, ourselves pretty lucky there. There's mm -hmm. a nice campus there. Yeah. We have a nice nature trail and yeah. nice outdoor fields that are well taken care of. Yep, they are. It's just Vermont in general. You know, you got nice pretty views pretty much everywhere. Wouldn't trade it for the world, Mike. I love living no, here. It's a great place to live. Sure is. Nice to have clean air to breathe. So. Yes. <laughs> Two and one now. Menard wines and fires. That's chopped over off the dugout. Menard, who I said, solid pitcher for this Hazen Wildcat team. He's had a solid, solid season. He has. Between pitching and playing third base, good yeah. defense over there, hits well. And he's also actually spent some time behind the plate earlier this year when Montgomery um, was out. Um, so Menard has done a lot this year. I believe it. So Menard remains on the mound. Two and two now, one out. Stockwell. Menard now from the set, he'll deliver. That's high for a ball, look good there. Good pitch by it Menard. Look good. Menard winds and fires. That's in there for strike three. Good pitch by Andrew Menard, his second strikeout of the game. Like I said, don't blame Spencer Howard a bit for trying to rest Lyle as long as he can. Oh, that's a good move. With the it game's is. coming up next week and playoff swallowing. Yep. He only went two innings today and struck out a plethora. Struck out six, I believe, in two innings. That's hit hard on the ground. Oh, Rivard, he'll sky it. Right there, Mike, I think you just got to eat that one. Just hold it. No sense in trying to make a thrown error right there. And is that Rooney at third base? He it really, was. really the only play they had is Rooney trying to cut that off and throw to first. Um, Rooney did a good job trying to do that. But, but it's just scooted past him yeah. and then Rivard. I think it was a little late by the time Tyler was going to be able to make yeah. the throw. Yeah, I think so. I know that eats at Rivard a little bit, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. Hard-working kid, passionate. Yeah, he's a competitor. Sure is. You see, he had a great season in basketball. He did. I think he might be on his way to 1,000 points, but I don't know how close he is. Because he's been a good scorer for you every year he's been here so far. Yes, uh, good play, my Montgomery. On to Gould at first. But you know, I'll take a second to read our sponsors. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. 
You're watching HCTV Channel 1080, archived at www.hctv.us. We'll be right back. So standing in now, Mike, we got a uh, pinch hitter, Wyatt Flanders. Who is he hitting for? Looks like for DeGrosier. Yep. And actually, we talked about seniors. Wyatt's, Wyatt's a senior also. Um, yep. Long-time solid player on the Hazen baseball team. Yes, very much so. Looks like. And a, and a great hunter from which I, from what I understand. You hunt, Mike? You know, I've never much got into it. I think it's a great thing. Um, great to be out there for people who enjoy it. Um, yep. Jaden loves it. We've got one son who loves it, one son who doesn't want anything to do with it. So. I'm assuming Isaiah is the one who doesn't want yeah, anything he, to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> A funny story, he went out with my buddies youth hunting one year and they got out there and got back and realized neither one of them had ammo, so. <laughs> yep. So, you know. So Flanders strikes out on three pitches. Oh, well, can't shoot a deer with no ammo. No, like. no, so we get laughed out of that anyways. <laughs> um, no, it looks like Jaden's warming up on the mound down there, Mike. Oh, yeah, it looks like he might come in next inning. Yep. And or maybe he's just throwing, but who knows? Gould is who has got two hits, grounds it to third. On to first. Good so play by the third baseman. Quickly retired the side. Or not retired the side, but two quick outs for the ghosts. Yeah, Mike, I'm a big fisher. I don't hunt though. I love to fish. Oh, I'm sure it, like a, a day like today it'd be good to be out there on the lake. Oh, sure would. Bet the fish are biting like crazy today. Uh, beautiful day. Sure is. And Davison now up, who's yep. walked, struck out, and then reached on an error on a well-hit ball to left field. Yep. Do you fish either, Mike? No, no. Never got into it. It's tough. you got to be patient. <laughs> and that's going to get a piece of Davison, so he'll wear that one. He'll get hit, and he's headed down to... I think he's in some pain at the plate. Yeah. That one can't feel good. Yeah. Got him right on the elbow, I think. No, no padding there to. He's a tough kid, though. I'm he is. I'm sure he'll be all right. Oh, they're not going to give it to him, even though I think that hit him. Huh. So Davison's going to have to stand back in and bat. Well, yeah. no one Tyson, he's just as happy to get in there and have another swing at it. I'm sure he is. Like you said, Tyson, just real good ball player. Yeah, good very athlete. solid. Always worked hard when he was on the basketball court, too. He did. And swing and a miss. So that'll be two balls and a strike now to Davison. Good defender. Yes. Yeah, very good on the ball defender. Very good on opposing team's point guards. Sure was. And waved at and missed, so Davison takes two big cuts there and misses. Spencer telling him to take a deep breath. Uh, Revard on deck, really hoping Davison will reach. Yep, give him something to drive. And Davison will swing and miss. He's frustrated there. So that's going to do it. So I'll take a second here. Read our sponsors. Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. We support Hazen Athletics and DR Property Maintenance, 793-7388. Call the doctor for all your property needs. One, two, three, hey. So we'll see what happens here, Mike, and see if Jaden takes the bump. Love to see Jaden pitch. I don't think I've seen him pitch yet, and it's looking that way. Uh, he said some really good outings and some where he struggled a little bit. So he is going to step on the mound. So after two innings of good work by Menard, I think Jaden's going to come on to shut the door here. 
the closer, <laughs> Jaden Baker. We will be right back, folks. So, we're back, folks. 12-1 lead for the Hazen Wildcats. Head to the top of the fifth. And Jaden Baker, the butcher of the baker, the strikeout maker now on the hill. You can really use that saying for anything, Mike. <laughs> I believe making his second appearance on the mound this year, maybe his third. Yeah, he said three or four. Um. It's outside for a ball, and like I said, Jacob Davison is going to come in at third base, and Fenton Meyer is going to remain in the game. Out. In yeah, Jaden, I believe, has one win and one save from earlier this year. And, Swing and uh, a miss. Yeah, and Jake Davison's played some solid third base for us this year. Yep. He's still, I think, only a sophomore or junior. So. He is only a sophomore, so he's got a lot of good baseball to come. He does. So one ball and two strikes now from Baker. That's low for a ball. Good pitch there by Baker, though. He's missing a little low. He is. Get in the backyard with him on that one, Mike. <laughs> Spent a lot of years doing that for sure. Believe it. And there's a nice pitch and a strikeout for Jaden Baker. Those were some awesome times. I believe it. There's nothing I love doing more in the summer, Mike, than just going out and throwing the baseball around with my friends. Oh, it's good stuff. Sure is. Or throwing the football, that's fun too. I've actually still got my glove in my car just in case the time comes. Yep. And this is Allen, the shortstop. Yep, Allen stands in. Looks like Fenton Meyer's out in center, actually, Mike. So Jass will stay in oh, left. And he, yep, that makes sense. Jass is in left. And Glad I have your good eyes here, James. Jass is in left, and I'm not sure who's in right. I assume it's probably Flanders out it there, is, but Wyatt, I'm not yep, sure. Yep, you're right. So two balls and no strikes. Baker now winds and fires. Ooh, that looked good on the corner by Baker. Thought he had a strike right there. Yeah, that looked good. Three balls and no strikes. That's low for a ball, so a four-pitch walk there by Baker. No big deal. Nothing to freak out about. And... Lewis is up. Yep, Lewis. And I believe he got a hit earlier today. I think he did at a single. Ferris had that hard hit double that scored yeah. the only run. Yeah, he hit that hard. He did. Montgomery throw down to second, but slides in safe. Good throw by Montgomery, just it a was. little late. He's got a really strong arm back there. He does. Really good glove behind the plate, too. Yeah, he keeps a lot yes. of stuff in front of him that could get by other catchers. He reminds me a lot of Yvonne Rodriguez, Pudge, if you know who that is. Oh, yeah. He was one of the best defensive catchers in the history of the game. As I'm sure Carlton Fisk was, too. Yes, yep. And uh, Gary Carter. Just to name a few. Yeah, and I, I got to say, I was a big Jason Veritek fan. Veritek was great. The captain. Yeah. Little, little before my time. I remember him yeah. a little bit, but I was little. Yeah, solid baseball player. You know who one of my favorites is, Mike? I love Kevin Euclid. Yeah, and he's been, he's actually been doing some commentating this year. At, he has. seen on Nesson. I actually like it. Yeah, he does a good job. He does. Very knowledgeable about the game. Had that unorthodox swing. but Yes. But he was a good hitter. Hit for a high average usually, hit home runs, drove in runs. He did, he was solid. Good defensively too. That'll be a pass ball. So a run is gonna, or the runner is gonna scoot to third base. Baker having some trouble with the control on the mound. Three balls and a strike. Get 
Baker winds and fires. That's in there for a strike right down the middle. Good pitch by Jaden Baker. I believe, did Dennis LaCours play baseball, Mike? Yeah, Dennis was a baseball player. He was a yep. pitcher, and I think Derek Richardson played as well. Derek was a good baseball player. Those yep. guys were also three-sport athletes. They were. Rush Oppland, I believe, also played. That's skied out to yep. left field. Zendik on the move. Out there. And Zendik drops it. So that's going to be an E7 for Jazz Zendik. So now it's 12 to two Wildcats. He's in really hoping to hold this 10 run lead in the fifth here. They are, so then after this, I believe it would be over, Mike. But I don't know if they have to bat or not, but. Ooh, that looked good. Yeah, he's had a couple of close pitches that have been balls, but. Jaden tight strike zone the whole day. Yeah, like I said, been a, been a very tight strike zone for the home plate umpire. And good backup by Revard on the throw down to third. Very good backup because that could have been trouble. Because then the Hazen Hazen would have had to bat again. So a runner at third with one out. Hopefully no base base hits here. Hopefully Jaden can get this guy at the plate. It's 2-0. Oh. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, a, a Revard pitches from time to time, doesn't he? He does. He's been solid this year. His last three or four outings, he's pitched really well. He pitched against, I think I called the game, he pitched a little against PA last year and did solid. Yeah, yep. Big tall kid throws hard. Yes. Ooh, Baker is not getting any help from the home plate umpire. And number seven stands. Uh, this is a pinch hitter, and we didn't get his number, I don't believe. That is. Hurley. Hurley. Oh, okay. So Hurley stands in. It'll be his first at bat. First pitch strike by Baker. Jaden's got to settle in here. Try and get some big outs. He'd like to roll a double play ball, I think. Good pitch there by Baker. So 0 and 2 to Hurley. Good job by Montgomery holding it there, giving the home plate umpire a good look at it. Nice frame. And strike three by Jaden Baker. Nice pitch there, his second strikeout. Mike, I don't know what you're gonna do after freaking Jaden graduates. You're gonna have no kids left to oh, play man. basketball. Man, it's one of my favorite things. Um, was coaching them growing up and now watching them play. It doesn't get much better than that as a parent. And I mean, helping so. them coach in basketball too or yeah. being yep. part of that. It's uh, It's been great, but. And that's driven out towards yeah. center field. Routine for Meyer. He'll come in and get and that. put that away. And that is going to do it today, folks. Thank you so much for joining us. It'll be a 12-2 win for your Hazen Wildcats. My player of the game today is going to go to Asia Gould who had a nice, nice game today. Hit the ball extremely well, drove in a lot of runs today. So my player of the game is going to go to Asia Gould, who had two hits, drove in three runs today. So thank you guys for joining us. I'm James Salvis. Mike Baker joined me today. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Have a good day.